it is all a question of the design. So being able to see how this mystical way is a rising above, up above the mammalian domain gets us out of lower principles, out of being the butcher, taking that leap or walking through the gate, through the bridge, there we go. Then the leap, the leap comes out of the tribe and into the unknown if we're not there yet. So when we're looking at this mystical way, it's not just about interpreting the mystical way um, process to see this evolutionary, mystical, spiritual, religious life. When I was growing up, I tried a bunch of um, religions because I lived a lot of different places with a lot of different people. And some really turned me off. And, you know, I did a lot of book searching and reading and such. Some really turned me off. But if, as an a quote unquote adult, you know, young 20s, as far as I thought I was an adult, I called myself spiritual, not religious. And you see that as a commonality around um, a lot of people, not religious, not tied down to whatever the um, sacrifices have to be that you must, should, and need to do in order to have God love and accept you. So that's the thing to, to see that this is not about that. Um, when you think about feasts associated with religious festivals, it's supported by us having dominance over the food chain. So we have lots and lots on that smorgasbord of celebratory um, meal engagement and community. And all of it is in the name of roasting the goat, cooking the pig, of the God that is blessing, let's say, in our weddings. In Hawaii, we used to uh, slaughter the pig and then stick it in the ground and let it cook with rock, hot rocks for a really long time. And that was our luau's, you know, our um, celebratory dinners, feasts, there would always be a cooked pig at uh, anybody's wedding. So it's, and of course, the wedding would be officiated by the religious person, whoever that happens to be. So the butcher and having to sacrifice, remember that term sacrifice here with the 49. There is a demand for sacrifice in order for us to live. And some people have a really hard time with that as far as the, the mystical development of us coming out of these ancient mammalian forms that were so beastly and so, um, my mind said demonic, as in killing, slaughtering, you know, but it is what it is as far as where we came from. Where are we going to? What's unique to, do, to you? Is it time to let go of sacrificing to God? Now, if we just take away the food stuff for a moment and we go to, the general homogenization of separating work and play. Work is the stuff that you do for pay. Play is the stuff that you do for fun. Now, why does it have to be that way? Have you ever wondered about that? You know, oh, the sacrifice and the super slave and the work really hard, hard work, 40 every day in order to feed the family. You got to love what you're doing. Remember, 40 is love of work. You're earning love from your family through work in order to feed their stomachs, their mouths, put foods in their mouth. Food in their mouth is the 37. Stomach is the 40. So back in the day when we didn't have work where we super slaved away in order to get money, in order to buy food, we would have to work in order to herd um, and take care of and slaughter and whatever the case may be to take care of the food source, having food resources. And the demanding of all of the people within the tribe who are going to be fed by that beast or that slaughter or that um, roast pig or whatever the case may be, all of them having to obey in order to get their seat at the table. And we don't have that anymore. So what happens is if we take away the food thing and we're looking at, we looked at work, now let's look at God. You have to love, honor, and obey God and these rules and principles, remember lower principles, that we set things by in order that you can earn your place in heaven so that you are not punished. You're going to go to hell if you don't 
love, honor, and obey. You know, there's badness and those people who are bad are going to pay the price. Oh, you're lazy. You're not earning your keep. Remember earning your keep. Then if you don't sacrifice a little bit of the pleasure to be had by lazing about, by working hard, then you're going to pay. And if you really don't sacrifice, then you're going to be sacrificed. That 49th gate can be very primitive and very, um, so this is, this is where this stream here is where people will shut you completely out. And I mean, punish you by extraditing you or, or um, kicking you out of their tribe, their people. No, you can't. You're not going to love, honor, and obey me and work hard and super slave for me. Then here you go. I'm going to kick you out and see how well you like it out there in the boonies where there's no one to protect you and take care of you and you don't have regular meal times and all that stuff. So it's a really primitive area of the body graph that we're talking about here. If you're good, you sacrifice. If you're bad, we'll sacrifice you, is the thing to remember as far as what is true here. Ooh, isn't it nice that that stuff is going away? I like that. That feels good. Okay, so Ross says, morality is quite a thing. It's a hammer on the soul. It is the bulwark of homogenization. And the morality that we have in this world, this is sacrifice morality. You're good if you're sacrificed. If you're bad, well, we'll sacrifice you. If you look at the basic tenets of religions, you look at how religion is going to reward you for the sacrifices that you make in your lifetime, you will notice that if you're not part of that religion, you don't get access to any of the so-called rewards of what they claim they can give you. Oh, you get to go to heaven in the afterlife. Where's the proof in that? None. None whatsoever. It's just the homogenization of our religious doctrines that back in manifester days, lording it over us, telling us what to do. This is how we control you. How do you control the masses? You educate them, you indoctrinate them, and you put the fear of God in them. The thing that you know, is always a, like a little niggling doubt in the back of the mind, thinking that, oh no, I'm going to be punished and I'm going to go to hell and, you know, all of that stuff. From whatever the case may be for you, where you lie upon this path of religion, where you are, I should say, where you are along this path of religion, whatever it is that is controlling you or manipulating you or telling you what to do, the fear of God in you, you know, deep breath. Come back to your own authority process because that's what's going to guide you along this mystical path of awakening in your way. And this demand for sacrifice is coming to an end. People don't want to sacrifice to work and super slave away for the contract where the contract or the person is corrupt and they don't live up to their promises anymore anyway. They can't. It's just not in the cards for them to be able to. I'm thinking about governments, thinking about our people, older um, adults who maybe did all kinds of work for a very long time. And maybe they lucky enough have a pension and social security. And yet, because of the shift of the incredible meteoric rise of um, inflationary reality now, they don't have enough they're scrimping and scraping and they don't have enough. What if um, they lost one of their partners and they're living alone? They just don't have enough. It's not enough anymore. There is no reward that these corporations nor the governments can ensure that or promise that anybody has any faith that or hope that they're going to deliver on, that the, the powers that be are going to deliver on. That's why everything's in chaos. Well, why? Why is because the times are shifting. We don't need that anymore. So when you're looking at the mystical way to begin with understanding, if you're looking at it with any clear kind of consciousness, this foundation of the drive to be needed and wanted and the demand of sacrifice is not something that we have to identify with anymore. 